Okay, here we go. Last part of lesson 8.4. We're going to talk about squares. So, still 8.4. Alright, so rectangle, rhombus, and square are all in lesson 8.4. When we get over here to add these, these are going to mean 8.5, and that might be 8.6, I don't remember, but we'll get into those in a little bit. Alright, square. So what in the world is a square? Well, let's go ahead and define it. A quadrilateral with four congruent angles and four congruent sides. Now, once again, it has to be a parallelogram. We can talk about why using some of our previous theorems. If a parallel, or sorry, if a quadrilateral has two sets of opposite parallel or opposite congruent sides, struggling today. Sorry, let's start that over. If a quadrilateral has two sets of opposite congruent sides, then it has to be a parallelogram. Well, if a square has four congruent sides, then it definitely has opposite congruent sides. Or we could use the one that says if a quadrilateral has two sets of opposite congruent angles, then it is a parallelogram. Well, since it has four congruent angles, it's going to have two sets of opposite congruent angles. Now this is one of those other ones we can come up with a two-word definition. Can anyone think of a two-word definition? Congruent angles, congruent sides, all congruent angles, all congruent sides. Equiangular, all congruent angles, equilateral, all congruent sides. What is that when we put it together? Regular. Regular quadrilateral. I'll abbreviate that again. Okay, keep in mind the word regular has a very special meaning in geometry. It means that something is both equilateral and equiangular. It does not mean typical or normal. Okay, regular has a very special meaning. Okay, all right, examples. So we've got four congruent sides. Sorry about that. We've got four congruent sides and we have four congruent angles. 360 degrees for a quadrilateral divided by four is 90 degrees each, so they're right angles. That's the only example I'm gonna draw. Because if I draw another one, it's gonna look the exact same way. It just is a little bigger, a little smaller. It's just scaled. Remember when we talked about scale factor. Okay, so that's it, one example. All right, sides. Now, actually, I'm gonna skip at sides and angles and diagonals and go all the way down to other for a section, for a, a brief section, because the most important thing is right here in this other box. All right, so let's go down to the other part. Other, no, it's not area, not area, not area, not area. Here, here it is. A mix between a rectangle and a rhombus. A mix between a rectangle and a rhombus. A square gets the four right angles from the rectangle, it gets the four congruent sides from the rhombus, and it does both of them, it kind of merges them together. So letter F right here, okay, I'm going to put that down here, letter F, it is the absolutely most important letter in this whole section for squares, so I'm going to circle it. If you understand that this works you really don't have to think about any of this. All we do is say, hey, if it was true for a rhombus or a rectangle, it's true for a square. Because a rhombus is, or sorry, a square is a rhombus. A square is a rectangle. If it was true, I'm going to move it over here. If it's true, I'm going to move it over here and so on. So I'm not even going to look at this sheet for right now. Okay, I'm not even going to look at it. None of this stuff. I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do. Okay, A2 is true for both of them. By definition, B2 is true. By definition or theorem 8.3, definition, well, we can use definition over here as well. We could use theorem 8.3 over here. C by definition. D4 by definition. Okay. Down to this box, A2 by theorem, uh, actually we could go by definition or theorem 8.4, so I'll just go by definition. B4, theorem 8.5. C by definition. D4 by definition. Okay, let's go down to this box. A by theorem 8.6. B by theorem 8.13. C by theorem 8.11, D2 by theorem 8.12. Okay, 
Okay, let's go down to this one. A. It was true here. It's got to be true here. B. Yep. C. Yep. There you go. That's it. That's a square. Done. Well, kind of. There's one more thing. I'm not totally done with the video, though. I know you guys are all hyper. That it's going to be over in like five minutes. Sorry. Okay, here we go. Well, what in the world did we just say? What, what is all this stuff? A to B to C, D4, all by definition. A to B4, C, D4, by definition in this theorem. A, B, C, D2, by all these theorems. What, what, what in the world did we just say? All right, let's look at it. We said, let's zoom out a tiny bit here, so I can kind of get it all in at the same time. Sides. All right, let's look at sides. We said, A to B to C and D4, every single one of them, by definition. Opposite sides are parallel. Two sets. Yeah. A square is a parallelogram. It's got to have opposite parallel sides. Okay. I'm going to draw a square real quick, kind of larger. Okay. We can kind of look at some of this. Okay. Here we go. Congruent, 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 right angle, right angle, right angle, right angle. This plus this equals 180. Consecutive interior angles make these parallel. This plus this is 180. Consecutive interior angle converse theorem makes these parallel. Okay, we got parallel sides. All right, well, what else? Opposite sides are congruent. Yeah, that, that's the definition. It's regular. Opposite sides are congruent. Okay, that's pretty easy. Two sets, yeah. All sides are congruent. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty easy. Consecutive sides are congruent. Well, there's one set. There is a second set. There is a third set. There's a fourth set. That's why it says D4. Okay, well, that was pretty easy. All right. What's this one? Angles. All right, angles. A2 by definition. What in the world? Angles. A2, A2. Opposite angles are congruent. Yep. Right angle congruent to a right angle. Right angle congruence theorem. Right angle congruent to right angle. Right angle congruence theorem. Okay. Consecutive angles are supplementary. I already talked about that one. 90 plus 90, 180. 90 plus 90, 180. 90 plus 90, 180. 90 plus 90, 180. How many sets? One, two, three, four. Four sets. So that's why it says, where is it? Consecutive angles are supplementary. I'm looking at sides. Huh? That's why I'm having a problem. Here it is. B4. C. All right. Well, what in the world does C say? All angles are congruent. Yeah, they're all right angles. Consecutive angles are congruent. One set. Before we were saying they equaled 180 when we were going with these sets. Now we're saying, yeah, they're congruent. One. They're congruent. Two. They're congruent. Three. They're congruent. Four. Okay. All right. Diagonals. Uh, diagonals bisect each other. Yep. Anytime we have a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other. Diagonals are congruent to each other. All right. Let's go to this picture. Diagonals. Diagonals. Let me draw the diagonals in. Okay, remember when we did a, a square, or sorry, a rectangle, and we proved that the diagonals were congruent to each other? Okay, I'm gonna grab that earlier one from our earlier video. Here it is, right here. Okay, remember how I kinda, we were talking this triangle right here? Kinda reshade that, that one. And then we were talking this one right here, kinda this, and I separated them out down here. We proved these were congruent by side, angle side, that wasn't there yet, and side, angle side. This is reflexive property. These opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent from here and here. And then right angle, right angle. Hey, side angle side. CPCTC, yep, it worked. Same thing. This triangle congruent to this triangle side. Right angle side, side, right angle side. This, this, CPCTC, yep, it's gonna work. Okay, uh, what about diagonals uh, are, where am I? Diagonals are perpendicular to each other. <laughs> Right angle, let's see. Well, we said diagonals bisect each other, right? We also said the diagonals are congruent to each other, so I don't have to put three marks here and here. I can actually put two, because if this thing is congruent to this thing to start with, and I cut them both in half, if I cut equal things in half, I get equal answers, so I can actually put two marks and two marks. Okay, this triangle is congruent to this triangle by side, side, side. These angles are congruent by CP, CTC, but they're also a linear pair. Hey, this sounds familiar. We did this with a rhombus. Okay, so the only things that add together that are equal 
and they had to be supplementary is 90 and 90. So yeah, we've got right angles here. Diagonals are perpendicular to each other. All right, what's the last thing for diagonals? Diagonals bisect the opposite angles. Okay, this is actually a pretty easy one if we think back to the chapter seven stuff. Congruent, congruent, big old right triangle here, congruent legs. Okay, I'm just gonna draw just that right triangle with the congruent legs. Okay, here it is. Those legs don't look very congruent. Sorry, bad picture, but we'll go with it. Hey, remember this? Base angles theorem. It's actually before chapter seven. That means that these angles are congruent. 90 degrees, I already used up 90, so 180, all three angles is 180, minus 90 is 90, gotta split it evenly. Hey, 45, 45, 90 triangle. Remember that? I could do the same thing up here, so this is 45 and 45 each. 45 and 45 each, 45 and 45 each, 45 and 45 each. So yes, the diagonals are bisecting the opposite angles for two sets. Okay, well, what about those those other things, the ABC? Right down here at the bottom, where are they? ABC. A, base times height. Hmm, let's go back up here and look. When we multiply things to find an area, they have to be perpendicular. Is this base perpendicular to this height right here? Yep, okay, I could do that one. Now what does letter B say? Length times width. The base is the length, the height is the width. Okay, sure, that one works. Diagonal one times diagonal two over two. Remember, that only works if the diagonals are perpendicular. <gasps> hey, they're perpendicular. Why do we divide by two? Remember that whole thing, if I took this times this, it'd be like a bigger rectangle around the outside and we only want the half of it in the middle and we leave all those sections out. Yep, that's why. It's gonna work, okay. What's that last one? Oh, what about, what about this one? We didn't write that down yet. Side times side or side squared. Well, if I took this side times this side and they're the same, let's say it's like six times six, is that the same as saying six squared? Sure. Well, what about eight times eight? Could I just do eight squared? Yeah, yeah, I could do that. All right, we gotta add one letter in here and that's letter D. Okay, so way down here, we're gonna add letter D in. It's the only new thing. If you take everything from this column and everything from this column, these two columns of rectangle and rhombus, and just transfer it over to the square column, you've got it, except for D and F. It's the only things you have to add in there. All right, well, what about G? Mid segment is parallel to the two, eh, no, 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 okay. What about E? Height, base one, base two, base one, base. Now we don't have two different bases, not gonna use that one, okay. All right, that's it, we're done with squares. Now there's one other thing I want you to understand. Because this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, think back to chapter seven, we got some one, one, root two stuff going on, okay? So let's say like this is four, this would be four. This whole diagonal here, all the way, would be four root two. Okay, using that one, one root two concept, which means this section just right here would be half of that, two root two. Okay, is that kind of making sense? One, one root two, so four, four, four root two, cut it in half, two root two. Now, what if you only look at like, uh, let me see if I can kind of get it here, cover some stuff up again. What if we only looked at it this way? That one and that one. Well, these things are congruent. We have those marked. The diagonals are congruent too. So this whole thing this way would have been four root two. Half of that would be two root two this way as well. Nice little right triangle here, right? So the Pythagorean theorem should work. Let's check it. Two root two squared plus two root two squared. Does that actually equal four squared? All right, I know some of you are getting better at doing this without all four steps, but I'm gonna keep showing four steps until everybody understands it, because still some of you are getting four for an answer here. Oh, we gotta get past that. Gotta get eight for an answer. How do we get eight? We square the two. We square the root two. Four times two is eight. Square the two, square the root two. Four times two is eight. Bring my plus sign down. Got my four squared is 16, 16, eight plus eight is 16, 16 equals, hey, hey, it's a right. Sorry, we lost some of that. Sorry, try that again, just take a look at it, all right? Square the both, four times two is eight. Sorry, I was talking, wasn't moving the paper. All right, here we go, right triangle. Wait, yeah, right triangle. 
right angle. Right angle, right triangle, little right triangle. Congruent to this little right triangle. Congruent to this little right, congruent, all right. All kinds of stuff going on with the square. Make sure you get it all memorized. I'm gonna run through it really fast. All right, we got regular quadrilateral, which means it's got all equal sides and all equal angles. Four equal sides, four equal angles. Looks like this, it's gotta be a parallelogram. What do all these things mean? All right, we're talking sides first. So two sets of parallel sides, opposite parallel sides, two sets of opposite congruent sides, all sides are congruent, and four sets of consecutive congruent sides. Dealing with angles now. Two sets of opposite congruent angles, four sets of consecutive supplementary angles. All angles are congruent, and four sets of consecutive congruent angles. Diagonals bisect each other. Diagonals are congruent to each other. Diagonals are perpendicular to each other, and the diagonals bisect opposite angles, two sets. Area is base times height, length times width, uh, diagonal one times diagonal two over two, and side squared. It's a mix between a rectangle and rhombus. Hold on, I'm gonna come back to this one real quick. Diagonal one times diagonal two over two. Give me that picture, give me that picture, give me that picture. Okay, so I could find the area of this rectangle by just, or this square, sorry, it is a rectangle too, by just doing four times four, side squared. 4 squared equals 16. That is the area. 16 you know, units squared, feet squared, whatever. Well, what if I did diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 over 2? It would be 4 root 2 times 4 root 2 over 2. 4 times 4 is 16. Root 2 times root 2 is 2 over 2 equals 32 over 2, which equals 16. Hey, I get the same answer. Okay, so you can see how that works. All right, you can get the answer this way. You can get the answer this way. So if I gave you a square, and this is the only thing I told you, okay, I told you this is a square, that is 8, find the area. You don't have to go figure out this side and this side to find the area. You could. You could do a 1, 1, root 2 with your 45, 45, 90, and you'd figure out eventually that this is 4, root 2, and this is 4, root 2, and we could do all the math. Or, diagonal number 1 is 8. Diagonal number two, they're congruent, so it's eight. Divided by two, 64 over two, 32. Done. Okay, a lot easier sometimes to find the area of a square by doing diagonal one times diagonal two over two. All right, that's it. Done with squares, done with lesson 8.4.